In this video, I will talk about the complex power in an AC circuit. I will show you the formula derivation related to the complex power in an AC circuit. Considerable efforts have been expended over the years to express the power relation as simply as possible. Power engineers have coined the term complex power which they use to find the total effect of the parallel loads in an AC circuit. Complex power is important in power analysis because it contains all the information related to the power absorbed in a given load. Let's say we have a load impedance Z here. If we apply a sinusoidal voltage in this load impedance, we will get a sinusoidal current I flowing in this circuit. Now see, if we express the sinusoidal voltage and sinusoidal current in standard form, we will get sinusoidal voltage Vt equal to Vm cosine omega t plus phi V, where this Vm will indicate the maximum value of sinusoidal voltage omega is the angular frequency and this phi V is the initial phase of the applied voltage in the circuit. And the resultant sinusoidal current IT is equal to Im cosine omega t plus phi I. Here this Im is the maximum value of current omega is the angular frequency and phi i is the initial phase of the current. Now see, we have instantaneous voltage Vt and instantaneous current It. If we express Vt and It in phasor form, voltage phasor V will be equal to Vm. We will take maximum value and the initial phase Vm phase angle phi V. We will take current phasor I equal to maximum value i m and initial phase of current phi i so we have voltage phasor v and current phasor i v equal to vm phi v and i equal to i m phi i let's say if i have a complex number z equal to r theta its conjugate z prime is equal to r minus theta that means we just have to flip the sign of the phase angle of the complex number in polar form so here we have current phasor I equal to I m phase angle phi I. Therefore, complex conjugate of current phasor I prime will be equal to I m I m phase angle minus phi I. In an AC circuit, we use the RMS value of voltage and RMS value of current. Therefore, we will express the voltage phasor and current phasor in RMS voltage phasor and RMS current phasor. So, V RMS will be equal to voltage phasor V over root 2 and V is equal to Vm phase angle phi V over root 2 will be equal to V RMS phase angle phi V. See here, I did not put vector sign on top of this V RMS. That means it will indicate the magnitude of this RMS voltage phasor and that will be equal to Vm over root 2. Similarly, RMS current phasor I RMS vector will be equal to current phasor I over root 2. Current phasor I equal to I M phi I over root 2 will be equal to I RMS phase angle will be phi I. See here I did not put any vector sign on top of this I RMS. That means it will indicate the magnitude of RMS current phasor and that will be I M over root 2. Now see we know the complex conjugate of current phasor I prime. If I want to calculate complex conjugate of RMS current phasor, that will be equal to I RMS prime equal to I prime over root 2. I prime is equal to I m phase angle minus phi i over root 2 will be equal to I RMS phase angle minus phi i. See, I did not put any vector sign on top of this I RMS. That means it will indicate the magnitude of RMS current phasor and that will be equal to I m over root 2. That means for both RMS current phasor and complex conjugate of RMS current phasor, I RMS, their magnitude will be equal. And that will be I RMS equal to I m over root 2. I will use this equation in the later part of this video. So far, I have talked about sinusoidal voltage Vt sinusoidal current it rms voltage phasor v rms rms current phasor i rms 
conjugate of RMS current phasor I prime RMS now I will talk about complex power in a circuit complex power is the product of RMS voltage phasor and the complex conjugate of RMS current phasor see here complex power will be the product of RMS voltage phasor and the complex conjugate of RMS current phasor RMS voltage phasor is VRMS and conjugate of RMS current phasor will be I prime RMS if I multiply these two I will get our complex power complex power will be a phasor quantity or complex number or complex quantity therefore it will have real part and imaginary part real part will indicate the real power P and imaginary part will indicate the reactive power Q therefore we can express complex power in this form S equal to P plus J Q this P will indicate real power in the circuit and Q will indicate the reactive power flowing in the circuit so complex power S is equal to VRMS into I prime RMS now see if I put the value of VRMS and IRMS prime I will get VRMS phase angle phi V into IRMS phase angle minus phi I if I perform record multiplication I will get complex power S equal to VRMS into IRMS these two are the magnitude of RMS voltage phasor and RMS current phasor and phase angle will be phi V minus phi I this is known as the polar form of the complex power or if I compare the complex number S with this equation magnitude of S and phase angle or complex power angle phi S you will see magnitude of S will be VRMS magnitude of RMS voltage phasor into IRMS magnitude of RMS current phasor and power factor angle phi s will be equal to the complex power angle phi v minus phi i okay this is also known as polar form now see if we have a complex number in this form z equal to r theta we can write it like this x plus j y is known as rectangular form or we can expand the complex number using Euler form that will be equal to r cosine theta r cosine theta plus j r sine theta so if I expand this polar form into Euler form I will get VRMS into IRMS cosine phi v minus phi i plus j IRMS sine phi v minus phi i or I can also write complex power s equal to p plus j q so we can use any of this form vrms irms phi v minus phi i or vrms irms cosine phi v minus phi i plus j vrms irms sine phi v minus phi i or complex power is equal to p plus j q or complex power s equal to magnitude of s and phase angle phi s or vrms into I RMS prime now what will be the unit of complex power see here if I look at the polar form you will see the magnitude of complex power S will be equal to VRMS into I RMS this will indicate the apparent power in a circuit that means VRMS into I RMS will indicate the apparent power in a circuit and from the unit of apparent power we know that the apparent power has a unit of volt ampere therefore the unit of complex power will be volt ampere and we can use any of this form to calculate the complex power in a circuit as we know the formulas of complex power now I will show you how do we express complex power in terms of load impedance Z see we define the load impedance as the ratio of RMS voltage pressure 
and RMS current phase order. That means load impedance Z is the ratio of VRMS and IRMS. So I can write down VRMS is equal to Z into IRMS. See VRMS is equal to Z into IRMS. Now see we define the complex power S equal to VRMS into conjugate of IRMS, VRMS into IRMS prime. Now see if I put Z, VRMS equal to Z into IRMS into I prime RMS, I will get complex power S equal to IRMS square into Z. See this IRMS will be equal to IM over root 2 while showing the magnitude of IRMS and IRMS prime. I showed you that the magnitude of IRMS and this IRMS prime will be equal to IRMS and that will be equal to IM over 2. So this IRMS square will indicate the magnitude which will be equal to IM over root 2 and this Z will be complex impedance. Okay. See here, this is our complex power in terms of load impedance Z is equal to IRMS square into load impedance Z. Now see, we know that load impedance Z can be expressed as real part and imaginary part where the real part will indicate the resistance and imaginary part will indicate the reactance. So if I put Z equal to R plus JX, I can write down complex power S equal to IRMS square into R plus JX. So if I multiply and separate out, I will get complex power S equal to IRMS square R plus J into IRMS square x now see we know that complex power can be expressed as s equal to p plus j q so here you will see if i compare this equation with this one p will indicate the real part of complex power and this q will indicate imaginary part of complex power so i can write down the average power or real power P will be the real part of complex power S that will be equal to I RMS square R and the reactive power Q will be the imaginary part of this complex power which will be equal to I RMS square into X while discussing various forms of complex power. I showed you we can write down complex power S as VRMS I RMS cosine phi v minus phi i plus j vrms i rms sine phi v minus phi i i indicated this as equation number one also the complex power is equal to p plus j Q. This is equation number 2. Now see, if I compare equation 1 and 2, I can write down real power P equal to VRMS IRMS cosine phi V minus phi I. This will be the average power or real power in the circuit. And the reactive power Q will be equal to VRMS IRMS sine phi V minus phi i this will indicate the reactive power q that will be vrms irms sin phi v minus phi i i showed you that p can be also written as irms square r q can be written as irms square x okay I can write it like this real power will be equal to s because this vrms irms will indicate the magnitude of apparent power cosine this phi v minus phi i will indicate the complex power angle phi s so s cosine phi s and this vrms irms will indicate magnitude of complex power and this phi v minus phi i will indicate phi s so s sine 
y is now see this is the formula for real power and this is the formula for reactive power the real power p is the average power therefore unit will be watt and the value of real power depends on the value of load resistor and it is the actual power dissipated in the load and the reactive power q is the measure of exchange of energy between the source and the reactive part of the load therefore reactive power will depend on the value of x and the unit of reactive power will be bar volt ampere reactive now see here if you look at the phi s and this this phi s we know that cosine plus theta is equal to cosine minus theta but in case of sine phi sine plus theta is not equal to minus sine theta therefore this q could be equal to zero or less than zero or greater than zero if the reactive power q is equal to zero that means the circuit contains a resistive load therefore power factor will be unity now see if this phi s is negative therefore q will be less than zero that means the circuit contains capacitive load therefore power factor will be leading if this phi s is positive our reactive power q will be greater than zero or positive therefore the circuit will contain inductive load as a result power factor will be lagging power factor okay that's it thank you